Video 6, Inclusive Provider Tunnels. This video describes the task number 6 of this introduction to multicast VPNs. The customer multicast traffic arrived at PE1, but it stopped there. You need a provider tunnel rooted at PE1 to transport this multicast data through the core. As soon as you configure PE1 to be the head end of such a P-tunnel, associated to VRF1, the auto discovery BGP route is modified with a new attribute. Let's see the change in detail. This new attribute is called PMSI, or Provider Multicast Service Interface. Among the many transport technologies available, this workshop picks a popular tunnel type, RSVP point to multi point LSPs. This choice is local to PE1, the head end of the P-tunnel. Now focus on the tunnel ID inside the PMSI attribute. Apart from the router ID of the originator, there is also a very important dynamic number that is called alpha here. Try to remember alpha and move on to the RSVP signaling. RSVP signals point to multipoint LSPs as a set of LSPs or sub LSPs signaled in a nearly independent way. In this case, there are three sub-LSPs targeted to PE2, PE3, and PE4, respectively. Let's start with the sub-LSPs targeted to PE2 and PE4. First, PE1 sends path messages to PE2 and to PE4. These messages have something in common, alpha. Thanks to alpha, PE2 and PE4 figure out that PE1 uses this P-tunnel to transport multicast data in the context of VRF1. PE2 realizes that the tunnel is associated to VRF1 by correlating the alpha value in the RSVP signaling with the alpha value in the IPMSI BGP auto discovery route that you saw in the previous slide. These two alpha values are identical. And that's how PE2 can map the RSVP tunnel to the actual service it belongs to, multicast traffic coming from PE1 in the context of VRF1. So PE2 advertises label L2, locally mapped to VRF1. And PE4 advertises label L4, locally mapped to VRF1. There is one more magic bit related to alpha. The transit router P realizes that these two sub-LSPs are actually part of the same point-to-multi-point LSP, alpha, and allocates a single label, L0, to both of them. The remaining sub-LSP goes to PE3 and follows a different path due to the IGP metrics. So when PE1 receives a C multicast packet from CE1, it sends one copy down to P and one copy down to PE3. Then P does an additional replication and delivers one copy of the packet to PE2 and PE4, respectively. As you can see, the replication is performed by the network. It's definitely possible to change the IGP metrics or add traffic engineering constraints so as to make all the sub-LSPs go through P. But this falls outside the scope of this introduction. Inclusive tunnels reach all the neighbors in the MVPN. In this case, PE2 is not interested in the C multicast traffic as it has no downstream receivers. However, it receives the flow and has to discard it locally.